Hello everyone, welcome back with another interesting video lecture on parasites of birds. You know, birds are infected with many different internal and external parasites that are listed in this picture. So among the internal parasites, helminthiasis is one of the major problems in the growth and production of the birds. In this video lecture, I'm going to talk about one of the important helminths of the birds, which is Singamus trachea. So throughout this video lecture, I'll discuss about the important species, morphological features, life cycle, pathogenic significance of pathogenesis, clinical manifestation, post-mortem findings, and finally, diagnosis and treatment of Singamus trachea infection or Singamiasis or gapeworm infection in different domestic and wild birds. If you like this video, don't forget to share, comment, and subscribe. Your feedback will be highly appreciated. So let's enjoy the video lecture. Superfamily Strongyloidea, genus Singamus. The name of the parasite is Singamus trachea. This parasite is also known as gape worm or red worm or fork worm. It most commonly affects wide range of domestic and wild birds such as domestic fowl, turkey, goose, magpie, jays, crows, etc. The location of this parasite is in trachea and lungs. The distribution of this parasite is worldwide. There is another parasite of domestic goose and chicken under the same genus which is Singamars escarzavi numorpha. The distribution of this parasite is in former Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. The disease caused by this parasite is called Singamus trachea infection or Singamiasis. Morphological features of Singamus trachea. Grossly, the parasite is bright red in color, therefore it is called red worm. The female parasite is around four times longer than the male parasite. That is, female is around one to three centimeter in length, whereas the male parasite is up to 0.5 centimeter in length. Both male and female are found permanently in copulation, forming a Y-shaped structure, which is look like a fork. Therefore, this parasite is also known as fork worm. Microscopic features of this parasite are also very typical. It has a cup-shaped shallow buccal capsule and at the base of the buccal capsule there is presence of five pairs of small teeth. There is no leaf crown at the mouth opening and male parasite has a small bursa with stout bursal rays, specular long and equal in size. Life cycle of Singamus trachea. Life cycle could be direct or indirect. In case of indirect life cycle, there is involvement of transport host such as earthworm, snail, sludge, beetles, larva of different house flies and even uh, chicken can act, can act as transport host. Infective states, it could be L3 within the egg L3 in environment, L3 in transport host. The eggs of Singamus trachea has some interesting features. Eggs may survive up to nine months in soil. And the L3 stages in transport host, they can survive even up to a year. So before moving on to the life cycle of Singamus trachea, I would like to mention some important epidemiological factors related to the occurrence of uh, this parasitic infection in domestic and wild birds. So this parasite primarily affects young birds. Adults acts as carrier. Passeriformes and galliformes, birds of all, all ages are susceptible to this parasitic infection. And birds reared in outdoor pens are also highly susceptible. 
so you know adult male and female parasites are found in copulation in trachea and bronchi female parasite lay eggs in trachea along with a lot of inflammatory exudates uh, the eggs are then coughed off swallowed and passed in the feces the development of l3 in the environment it takes around one to two weeks under under optimum temperature and humidity final host that is parts of different species uh, will be affected will be infected by ingesting the infective stages that i have mentioned earlier afterwards l3 penetrate the intestinal wall and reach to the lungs of the birds where the rest of the molting that is l3 to l4 l4 to l5 stages will be occurred so adult will be found in trachea and female parasite will start laying eggs for the completion of the life cycle it takes around three weeks Pathogenesis of Syngomus trachea infection or Syngomiasis. In trachea, the adult parasites attach themselves and suck blood. There will be tracheitis. It is hemorrhagic or cataral tracheitis. So, due to the blood, mucus, and other inflammatory ex exudates, there will be occlusion of the air passes. As a result, bird will suffer from difficulty in breathing so due to severe difficulty in breathing birds may die occlusion of the air process may also contributed by rapidly growing larva adults in the lungs ecchymosis edema and pneumonia are resulted due to heavy migration of these larval stages throughout the lungs so all these things will lead to respiratory distress in severe cases birds are died and you know the male parasite will contribute to the development of minute nodule formation in the wall of the trachea due to its permanent attachment with the organs clinical sign of syngomus trachea infection or syngomiasis syngomus trachea infection is characterized by coughing sneezing sneaking that is clicking sound from the affected birds the most common characteristic sign of this affected birds is gaping for air you know due to the airway obstruction birds can't breathe normally the affected birds will then open their mouth with a stretching out the neck for easing the difficult breathing and therefore this parasite is also known as gape worm. Other clinical signs include head shaking, tossing of the head to get rid of the airway obstruction by the parasites and the exudates. In less severely affected birds, weakness, anemia, and emaciation can also be seen. Postmortem findings of Syngomus trachea infection or Syngomiasis. So in necropsy, emaciated and anemic carcass will be found. Inflamed trachea along with worms will be seen. You know, Syngomus trachea is bright red in color and male parasite is much uh, shorter than the female parasite. And both male and female parasite are found in copula forming a Y-shaped structure. So this feature will confirm the Syngomus trachea infection or Syngomiasis. Diagnosis and treatment of Syngomus trachea infection or Syngomiasis. For the diagnosis, we first need to consider the clinical history along with different epidemiological factors in the occurrence of this disease. We need to check the different clinical signs that I have already mentioned and post-mortem examination of the dead bird will also confirm the Syngomus trachea infection or Syngomiasis. For confirmatory diagnosis of the affected live birds, coproscopy can be done. 
the x of the cingama struck here is ellipsoidal and there is thick upper coulomb at both ends these x must be differentiated from the x of capillaria species because both x look similar Treatment of Singama trachea infection or Singamiasis, different anthelmintics such as thiabendazole, mevendazole, fenbendazole, etc. can be prescribed for the affected birds.